Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time to begin. Search. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this evening. Father, I pray for you. Thank you. Thank you for life of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask your blessings upon this service, upon the lives and the hearts of men and women. I just pray, God, that you will be of you in all our lives. Lord, by the Holy Ghost, we thank you. Turn in your hymnal, if you'd like, to page 360. I am resolved. Page 360. Amen. I am resolved. No.
if you'd like. Victory in Jesus, page 240.
Um, a lot of times you depend on this and that, and it doesn't come through. But God will come through for you. God will answer your prayers. God will be there for you in your darkest hour. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. God will be there for you when you deal Amen. with things that you don't understand. And, and God will work it all out. He'll put it together for you. Yes. And, um, you know, you have situations that many times it doesn't make sense or you don't understand why. And in some way, God always brings it together. Yes. And, and, when, and, and then at the end of the journey, you look back and you say, okay, now it makes sense. Yes, sir. But if, if God had shown you prior to that, you might not have gone on the journey. Amen. But sometimes God has to lead you and guide you. And uh, You remember um, uh, the movie Wizard of Oz? You remember that? Mm -hmm. And Dorothy, all she wanted to do was go home. She said, uh, there's no place like home. And and uh, who was that? Oz? But the, the Oz told her, Follow the yellow brick road. Stay on the narrow way, right? What we have to do as Christians, we got to keep walking the path. Yes. We got to keep going, even though it's hard, even though it's difficult, even though sometimes life gets hard. We got to follow the narrow brick road. Yes. Amen? Yes, sir. The Bible said, wide is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. Amen. And I'm going to preach on it. The Lord just gave me a message. I preach on it at another time about, about a few that find it this narrow way. But then in the book of Revelation, the Bible says there will be a number that no man can know. Yes, yes. And, and so... With God's help, we'll preach about that one of these days. Amen. Few to God. A few to God is not the same as a few to us. Mm. <laughs> Just like he said, a thousand years is as a day as a day as a thousand years. What we think is a few could be billions to God. Huh? So don't get it twisted. Don't think the word of God contradicts itself. The word of God doesn't contradict itself. We contradict God. We contradict ourselves. God does. Amen. And he said, why is the gate? If there's many people that choose the path of sinfulness, because it's easy. Mm -hmm. But a very few people want to walk the narrow way, because if you walk the narrow way, you got to unload things so that you can fit. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. You got to get rid of things. You got to unburden yourself so that you can walk down through that with no hindrances and no obstruction. Amen. Amen. And few there be that time. Yes. But there will be a number that no man can know. Huh? Oh, man. The Bible said in the Old Testament, and there shall be a way, and it shall be called. The highway of holiness. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that I'm not just a Christian. I'm a holiness Christian. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm a holiness Christian. Yes. I believe that it's important to live right. Yes. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm striving and I'm pursuing the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Living right. And accomplishing the will of God along the way. Amen. And so, in order for Dorothy to get home, she had to stay on that narrow brick road. Yes. And a lot of times, on your way home, there's going to be many things that are going to try to pull you off the path. And the lion tried to pull her off. The tin man tried to pull her off. The scarecrow tried to pull her off. She said, no, you come with me. I'm not going with you. Yes. And the witch, yes. Yes. which is symbolic of the devil. Yes, sir. The witch tried to destroy her. But in every case, Dorothy stayed on the narrow brief road. Yes. All right? 
And she got home. Amen. That's what I want to do, God. I want to fight through every difficulty, every challenge, yes. every battle, Ooh. every hardship. Hallelujah. Understanding and realizing that God is with us. Yes, sir. I say God is with us. Amen. And I thank him tonight that we're walking the path, the narrow path. That means that we have to make changes. We have to be willing to unburden ourselves with things that we're comfortable with. But we can't keep them if we want to serve God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm just telling you. And, um, and I thank God tonight for his faithfulness. Yeah. What I want to do tonight, I want to go back and I want to look at... Um, I want to look at the message that I started this morning, and I want to share with you about God being a gift giver. Yes. Amen. Amen. God gives gifts. Yes, sir. There are many gifts that come from God, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not going to go back through and read every, all of the I read it to you from Ecclesiastes this morning. I'm just going to read the text, and then I'm going to read the uh, the, the uh, bonus the bonus verse with that text. And I want to share with you. I want to piggyback off of this morning and do part two of God giving gifts of God the gift giver, the gift giver. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 13 says, And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. Amen. And I talked about that this morning. You know, it's, it's not a sin to work. It's not a sin to put effort in. It's not a sin to do something that requires effort. And challenge. You know, it's, it's okay to challenge yourself. That's work. That's labor. It's all right for people who are able to work to get a job. And, and, uh, and you know, raising a family requires work. Yes, Being married requires work. Being a Christian requires work. Uh, 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 taking care of your responsibilities. Taking care, you know, of... Uh, Handling finances is work. And, and just you just go throughout life. And God said that you would be able to eat and drink and enjoy the good of all your labor. Yes. Why? Because it is the gift of God. You know, there's gifts from God in hard work. There's gifts from God in you being faithful in your responsibilities and doing things that require effort, that require determination, that require you doing things that may not be easy, might not be always uh, what you would call um, things that you would just eagerly go and do because they're not pleasant, but they're things that you must do, things that must be done so that you can accomplish God's will in your life. Whether it be working on a job, uh, raising a family, being married, all these things. And being a Christian, serving God, and on and on and on. But there's gifts from God in that. Amen. God will bless your labors. God will bless your efforts. God will bless you when you put in this kind of work and effort because uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Yeah. All right? James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Hey Amen. That must, that don't sound like it's on. If not, I'll just do James chapter 1. There we go. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift. Man, that's nice, isn't it? Is from above. Amen? Yes, is from above. Now, where does good gifts and every perfect gift, where is it from? Above. Now, who's above? Is the devil up there? Huh? Are the imps up there? No. We know who's up there. God's up there. Amen? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from a 
below and coming down. So they're not just up there, Brother Lance. God sends them down. Isn't that what the Bible just says? So we know they're there. We know that God wants to give us things. We know that God wants to bless us. Right? And so the Bible said, and counted down from the Father of lights, yes. with whom is no what? Variableness. Who will not, who does not change. Thank God that he does not change. Yes. One thing about God, you know who he is, you know what he, what he does, he doesn't change. He said, I am the Lord God and I change not. Yes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. There's no variableness in God. All right? You know who you're working with. You know who you're dealing with. So you might as well just square up with God. Don't try to go around. Don't try to go under. Don't try to go over. Just come right in at the door and say, here I am, God. This is what I want to do. You're my, you're my king. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my everything. Yeah. And be real and honest with God. All right? Uh, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is what? No variableness, and neither shadow of turning. I'm thankful that God is faithful. Yes. I'm thankful that I can be, if, if God is supposed to be somewhere, if God tells you he's going to do something, he does not change. He does not turn. He does not tell you one thing and, and does something else. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm glad for that tonight. Not only is there no variableness in God, that there's no turning in God. Thank you, God, tonight that I can trust you, that I can depend on you, uh, that I can look to you and know that if you tell me you're going to do something or if you're going to be somewhere, that you're good for it. Amen. That God is good for it. Thank you, Jesus. And right before we pray, I share with you this morning, what is the definition of a gift? A thing given willingly to someone without payment. Without payment. Or a present. You know, a present or a gift. All right? Something given to you without payment. All right? Thank God for gifts. We all like gifts. We all like for people to do things for us and, uh, and all of that. And so this morning, I talked to you about uh, things that were synonymous with a gift or with a present. The first thing I told you that normally when you receive or you get a gift or receive a gift, number one, it costs the person something. Mm -hmm. It usually costs the person something. And for that, I said that it cost the Lord. Uh, uh, I read to you John 3.16, right? I read to you John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we share that with you. Number two, usually when somebody gives you a gift, they wrap it up. And I told you about how in Luke chapter 2, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swapping clothes. Thank God that for the gift of Jesus Christ that was wrapped in swapping clothes lying in a manger. And then usually there are people who put it under the tree and, uh, 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 what happened. And the Bible says that in Acts chapter 5 verse 30 that God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. So we see that. And then after all of those things, the gift must be given. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, the person that's giving the gift must receive the gift. Must receive it. And then I share with you Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For God, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, in order to receive salvation, in order to have salvation, you must receive it. You must obtain it. You must pursue it. You must take it or 
receive it from God. It's not just something that's automatically divvied out. It's not something that's just you just automatically have. Salvation is something you have to get. You have to obtain. Salvation is something you have to uh, get. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we find that God gives gifts. God gives gifts. And that gift cost God something. He wrapped it, put it in the tree, put it on the tree, and now he offered it to every soul. Now God has a gift for every person that's ever been born in this world. Some people received it, some people have not. Amen. But God is a gift giver. I said, God is a gift giver tonight. Sir, would you pray, please? Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for Son. I pray and I thank you for what you're going to accomplish and what are you accomplished this day and what you're going to accomplish tonight by faith. We thank you for all these things. Amen. God is a gift giver, fellow man. Amen. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the day that I walked inside of New Testament Christian Church in September of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in September of 1984. Amen. And, and it was through the message, it was through the word of God, it was through the preaching of God's word that I realized that just because I was raised in church, just because my mom is a Christian, just because my aunt and uncle was the pastor of the church I grew up in, it didn't matter. I had to receive salvation. I didn't just automatically have it because I grew up in church. Salvation is something you must ask God for. You must repent of your sins and you must ask him to come into your heart to receive salvation and you shall receive amen yes. so God is a gift giver tonight the first gift that God gives is the gift of salvation the gift of salvation what is salvation anyway a lot of times you, think, you need to get saved or are you saved do you know the Lord is your personal savior uh, and all of these things do you, do you know Jesus the word salvation, first of all, means to be set free. It simply means to be set free. What that means is that all of the things that you are caught up in in sin, anything that would be deemed sinful, is bondage in your life. I want you to think about that. Anything that would be considered or deemed sinful in your life is something that is, is, is binding you. And in order for you to get free of those things, you must ask the Lord to come into your life, forgive you, repent, uh, number one, repent of those things, and say, Jesus, come into my heart, help me to stop lying, help me to stop cheating, help me to stop fornicating, help me to stop committing adultery, help me to stop doing it, oh no, 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 whatever it is that's going on in your life that's not right with God, is, is, is binding you, have you hostage, and all of that, what salvation does is once you ask God to forgive you of those things, he comes in and detaches you and sets you free from those things. Amen? So they should no longer have an impact and they should no longer affect what's going on in your life because the word salvation means deliverance. Um, the word salvation is deliverance. It's the same concept as like when I've shared this many times, like if a, a cat goes up the tree and they call the fire department. You know, call the fire department and the fire department comes and gets the ladder out and stretches it out and grabs the kitty and, and gets it out of the tree. It is no longer in danger. It is no longer in a place where it's not supposed to be. Well, once you ask Jesus to come into your life, once the fire department has been called, in other words, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. 
Jesus, I'm sorry for the wrong that I've done in my life. Uh, and he comes uh, and he gets you down from the tree of fornication. Uh, he comes down. Uh, he comes and gets you down uh, from the tree of gay and lesbian and homosexuality or whatever the case may be. Uh, he rescues you. The word salvation means to rescue. Uh, it means to heal. Uh, it means to set free. It means also to make whole again. Because sin will break you. Sin will fragment your life. And so when you get saved, God's will, uh, what God does, salvation is a process of God piecing you and putting you back together. Amen. Amen. And that is a gift from God. Oh, slip your hands up and thank God tonight. Oh, the gift of salvation tonight. Hallelujah. God is a gift giver. I said God is giving gifts tonight. It's Christmas season. And God's got a gift for you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, sister, sister April. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. God is a gift giver. Yes, I'm is. sitting here tonight because I received the gift of salvation. Amen. I've been saved because Jesus offered me an opportunity and I received into my life. Uh, salvation uh, is free, but it's not cheap. I said salvation is free, but it's not cheap because it costs the Father, uh, His only begotten Son, uh, so that you and I uh, could be rescued, uh, could be healed, uh, could be set free. Amen. I'm going to tell you something else that salvation does. Salvation brings the gift of healing in your life. Mm -hmm. Do you not know when a person has been on drugs for many years, when a person has been messed up in pornography, when a person has been messed up sexually, when a person has been messed up from, from alcohol or a life of a, a criminal behavior, there's healing needed in that. Amen. We need to be healed. Yeah. I said we need God to heal when people have been hurt and damaged by sin. Yes, Amen. And so he said, by his stripes, we're healed. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, thank God uh, for the gift of salvation tonight. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Oh, glory. Yes. And how about this? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's what's wrong in the church world right now. Is people in the church world, not just this church, but in the Presbyterian church, in the Episcopalian church, in the Catholic church, in the Seventh day Adventist, in the Jehovah Witness. I don't care what church it is, we need the Holy Ghost. I said we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me explain it to you. On the day of Pentecost, the God sent the Holy Ghost in the upper room. There was 120 people up there. Now he sent 500. But you see, a 500 minus 120 is what? 280? Is it 280? I believe it's 280, something like that. And anyway, there's a lot of 280s. There's a lot of 280s in the world. Most people think the Holy Ghost is something weird. Most people think the Holy Ghost is something mysterious. Most people think the Holy Ghost, they besmirch and they make fun of God. They say, I don't believe in that speaking in tongues. I don't believe that the Holy Ghost is for us today. I don't believe we need that. And you see, you part of the 280. Uh, you part of the 280. Amen. You you wanted to, you you part of these people that will just let the devil lie to you. That will just tell you, I don't need that. That's weird. That's that's not of God. But let me read something to you. So Peter stood up uh, when, okay, so 
that God is real. I, they are, they can, I can take them to court uh, and I can use their life. Uh, I can use how you live uh, and say there's a God uh, in heaven. So God, when he saves you, he gives 
gives you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when you get the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he removes the guilt of sin. So you're free to change. You're free to grip to grow and free to get right. Amen. Don't give me that junk. Romans 5 and 17. For if they by one man's offense, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. In other words, because of what Adam did, it caused death to reign all across all generations and all people. One man. His sin was deadly. What he did when him and Eve did that in the garden, it was deadly. It impacted for now every man and every woman that is born into this world is born in sin. What did the Bible say? For as by one man sin into the world and death by sin, so that all have sinned. And uh, it's, it, it's caused all of us uh, to be born in sin. That's why it's important how you live. That's why it's important for your life to really show the signs that you've been changed. Uh, because our life impacts others. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. The gift of righteousness. I'm free to live the way that God wants me to live. Yes. I'm free to make changes in my life because he removed the guilt of sin and he replaced it with the righteousness of God and now I'm free to, for my character to change. I'm free to be ethical. I'm free to live holy. I'm free to have the things of God in my life, uh, to walk with him and to talk with him. Uh, and when I spend time in prayer uh, and when I spend time in the word of God, uh, he just keeps adding uh, to his righteousness. Uh, he keeps helping me to grow in grace uh, and in the knowledge uh, of the truth uh, because God uh, has given me uh, the gift uh, of righteousness. Hallelujah. God, stand with me tonight. Stand with me tonight. God is a gift giver. I say God is giving gifts tonight. Hallelujah. I say God is a gift giver tonight. All you got to do is receive it. Receive the gift of salvation. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. The Bible said righteousness exalted the people. But sin, the righteousness exalted a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. And I want the righteousness of God in my life. I'm not looking for an excuse to keep living in sin. I'm not looking for an excuse to keep doing wrong. I want the gifts of, I want gifts from God tonight. I said I want gifts from God tonight. Let's find a place to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you. We glorify you. And we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 